All right. There were several musical instruments and new technologies thanks to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, pianos were became really household instruments because they became began to be mass produced during this time. Um, they invented the steel frame that allowed for um, a heavier instrument, um, make, making a larger keyboard available so that you could have you know the deeper tones with the heavier strings and, and a much wider range to the instrument. Um, in the uh, the violins, they added the chin rest and they changed the bow um, so that they could uh, play harder and faster and um, and and kind of make it um, more powerful. Um, harps and timpanis, uh, the uh, the foot pedals were added to the harps and to the timpanis to change the keys that were available to the instrument so that uh, more keys could be played in. Um, they also added the valves to the trumpets and the horns so that they were no longer limited to just certain pitches, but they could play a much wider range of pitches, more chromatic and, you know, higher and lower, much more possibilities. Um, they also added the, um, the buttons on the flute were started to be connected with a, a metal pipe, and they started making flutes out of metal as well. But they had these con uh, the pieces of metal that connected these keys up here to the ones that were lower, so that you had a, a wider range of, of notes that you could play on the flute as well. Um, they added, um, let's see, oh, they added the... The saxophone. The saxophone was created in the 1850s. So we have a lot more timbers in the, available in the orchestras, a lot more instruments. Uh, we added piccolos and uh, tubas and the low um, contrabassoons. So we have a much wider range in the orchestra, uh, much more op opportunities for more color and more sound in the orchestras of the time. And the uh, next composer that I want to talk to, with you about is Edvard Grieg. Um, he was a uh, Norwegian composer, and he is probably the most famous of the Norwegian composers. In fact, he became the national composer of Norway. And if you go to Epcot Center and you go through Norway, you will hear the music of Grieg. Um, these romantic composers uh, very often used the folk music, the music of their country, in their um, compositions. And Grieg, because uh, he definitely was very strong in the use of the, of the folk music, um, he actually brought the nationalism and, and made it a very important uh, feature in his music, uh, wrote it into his orchestral pieces, into his symphonies and things, so that it he just made it, he became the national hero. Um, he uh, used uh, a, some ideas of um, a poet but that's, whose name was Henrik Ibsen. He used the idea of, of a poem by him and folk tale that um, he wrote a piece of music around. It's called the Peer Gint Suite. And in this story, Peer Gint is um, a Norwegian ne'er-do-well. He's, he's, he's kind of a bit of a rogue. Um, he had been engaged to be married to a young lady named, a uh, young girl named Ingrid. But because of his laziness and he just, you know, it's kind of good for nothing, uh, she decided she didn't want to marry him. She was going to marry someone else. So he shows up at the wedding and kidnaps her carries her off into the woods, and then leaves her. He finds another young girl who he seduces, who turns out to be the daughter of the Mountain King. And so the Mountain King, in his um, anger, he sends the trolls out to capture Peer and to bring him back for you know, execution. Well, Peer gets away from the, the trolls. He gets... he hides in the mountains and gets away from them. And uh, and then he in, m ends up meeting up with a young girl whose name is Solfege. And he and Solfege live together in the woods for several years, and he actually settles down a little bit, and he treats her pretty well, and and they, you know, they stay together for a few 
for a few years. But then he hears that his mother is at the point of death and he is, you know, concerned. So he leaves. Uh, he doesn't make it back to see his mother before she dies. So he takes off on an adventurous quest for whatever reason. And he goes through um, several different places in North Africa. Uh, he goes to Arabia. Um, he goes all over the world, actually. But when he finally does come back to Solfege, she's been waiting patiently and faithfully for him for all this time. So that's the, the tale of Pier Gant. Now, um, Greg wrote the music, and he wrote quite a few pieces, but he wasn't really pleased with all of them. So he, sub he pulled out only eight, and he uh, put them together into two groups of four and kind of kept them um, and used them as, you know, combined them as two orchestral suites. And so we're going to listen to two pieces from one of those. The Morning Mood is the first one. And when you listen to Morning Mood, it could probably make you think of um, cartoons and the the, um, the sun coming up, the birds tweeting in the in the trees and, you know, just kind of a, a very peaceful um, scene in, in the country. And so the morning mood is the first piece. And then the second piece that you're going to listen to is in the Hall of the Mountain King. And that's the one where Pierre is being chased by the trolls through the mountain. And you'll hear the music start rather slowly and a little bit ominous. It's in a minor key and it's a little bit, um, I won't say spooky, but just uh, it's just a little bit eerie. And then as they are chasing him, it's getting faster and faster and louder and louder until until finally he gets away at the end. And they they I guess they give up at the end. But you're going to listen to those two pieces by Edvard Grieg. First, Morning Mood, and the second is In the Hall of the Mountain King. <laughs> 